Hey, James. Jose, just how important is tomorrow night's game? An opportunity to win the group if you do get the victory tomorrow night? Yeah, if uh, before the first match you tell us that in the last match we are qualified and we have that in the pocket and we we have the chance to to play to win it and to to be first in the group i would say immediately yes so we did our job uh, could do better but could be worse we did our job to to qualify in the first five matches and now in one game at home and uh, with 2000 uh, fans behind us we have the chance to play one game to try to win the group. Is that fundamental? I don't think it is. I don't think we should be afraid of play against any team in the next phase. But of course, um, normally, the teams that win groups are the best are, are the best teams. So if we can avoid them in, in the next draw, I think it would be a, an advantage. Okay, we'll go to Dave Heitner. Dave, where are you? Hi, hi, Jose. Hello. Um, Jose, it's a, a question about Hugo Lloris. Um, can you tell us what happened last week with Hugo? Um, there was a point on Friday where I think we all expected him not to play against Arsenal. Can you just run through what happened? And also, do you have any sort of thoughts on the, the COVID testing uh, procedures at the moment? Thanks. I, I don't know why you thought that uh, Hugo was not playing the game on on Sunday. Uh, we didn't say anything in my press conference. I was not even asked specifically if I'm not wrong, and uh, I don't know. I don't know why you you thought that he could be not playing. Uh, we had doubts with many players. We had players with with problems. To be honest, um, Hugo. And then Serge Aurier had a, a little issue too. Um, Toby Alderweireld, he was coming from a muscular injury and we all know how dangerous it is. Uh, for example, uh, our opponent, uh, Thomas, um, couldn't finish the game last week. Uh, I think Soyuncu also had uh, a problem, so Toby was was uh, a doubt. Uh, Regillon was a doubt. Uh, Tangi was a doubt. We had problems that I didn't want to bring them all to the to this table because I didn't want to give the idea of we were uh, a little bit in doubts with so many players. So we had a little a little problem with, with lots of people, but we never thought that Hugo was not ready to play. Uh, Joe Hart was ready to play in case of uh, Hugo couldn't, but we were always expecting him to be, to be ready to, uh, to play. And you asked me something about the, um, the process of, uh, of the testing. Uh, I don't know. I just know that every week we test twice. Uh, one for uh, um, UEFA and one for the Premier League. We do it in the same day. We do it one uh, before training and then we queue for the, the second test after training. We wait for the, um, for the results and, uh, and that's it. Okay, we go to Jonathan Veal. Jonathan. Hi there, Jose. Um, hey, John. We've just seen training footage and we didn't see Serge Aurier or Pierre. Um, are those two injured and will they miss the game tomorrow? Um, but is Tangi fit? Uh, Serge missed the game, yes. Um, because he had that problem before, uh, before Arsenal and he's still not completely recovered. Of course, he had a, a reaction from the game. Uh, Pierre, uh, no problems. Pierre, just the fact that he's playing every match. He played last week uh, three matches of 90 minutes. He played Thursday 
also in Austria, and he played against Arsenal again. And um, now is his time because we always try to give one rest to one or, or another player, and this time was um, was for him. And Tangi, yes, Tangi is. He was a doubt until until the last almost minute before Arsenal, and of course now it's three four days after. He's okay. Okay, Ali Gold, just unmuting you. Hi there, Jose. Um, I also noticed Eric Lamella wasn't out there. Um, are you starting to get a little bit concerned or frustrated about the time he's been out with this injury? Yeah, but he came out to the pitch after the um, the cameras left. Uh, he was just doing some work in in the gym during that period. We had cameras, but I I have nothing to hide. After after that, he he came to the to the pitch and he starting training um, progressively. So yes, of course, I was worried. Of course, we need every option available. But now for this difficult month. And also January is not going to be easy at all with so many matches and so many competitions. I hope for the Lamella will be back for that. Okay, George Cummins. George, just unmuted. Thank you. Hello, Jose. Um, I know you've had some great strikers before, but I just wondered, in terms of rate, work rate, uh, Harry and Sonny, do they work the hardest out of all the strikers you've had, ever had? Because you called them animals on Sunday. Yeah, I had some. Uh, of course... Um, I had amazing strikers in every club I've I've been, but the reality is that some of them are um, pure goal scorers, and others they do much more than uh, than that. And and for, of course, I had guys like that, but with the qualities that Harry and Sonny have, and uh, as you say, what they do for the team. And then they become second after the team. Uh, they are very special. Okay, Matt Law. Hi, Jose. Um, we know now that Manchester United will be joining you in the Europa League after the, the group stages. I just wondered what you thought about that, and also how proud are you of your own record? That you, I, I think I'm right in saying you've never failed to get through the, the group stages of the Champions League with the club. Yeah, I'm happy with with the record because the record meant that my clubs, they were always in a position of uh, uh, progressing and economically, of course, important, but not just economically, also for the, uh, for the, um, the prestige. Um, sometimes more difficult than uh, than others for example at united we when we lost at home against juventus uh, we had to go to turin and and win there to to then qualify in a very difficult group also with with valencia um and of course now manchester united become one of the top favorites to win the the competition the teams that that drop from the champions league are always uh, strong, strong teams are teams that normally they don't belong to that level of of the Europa League competition, uh, and of course Manchester United is one of the top uh, of the top teams. The group was very hard. Uh, Paris Saint Germain, Manchester, uh, uh, Leipzig. The group was, of course, very hard, and um, we all knew it. That was was not going to be easy for any one of them. And we all knew it that from that group, a top team would drop to Europa League. Okay, we've got time for two more. So we'll go with Carve and then we'll finish with Matt Barlow. Carve, uh, you're up first. Uh, Jose, I just wanted to ask you about uh, what happened in Paris last night, what your reaction was to those events. And also, if Spurs were involved in something similar, would you support? you and your coaching staff leaving the field of play? It's a very sad situation. Um, and every form of, um, of racism has to be a fight. It's never accepted. 
Um, I'm very sad. Of course, I'm very sad because we don't want that in in football. Uh, I personally know uh, the referee, not the fourth official, the referee. Um, Ovidio Atacam, good, very good guy, very good referee. Um, to be involved, not directly, indirectly, in, in a game that will become quiet, iconic, um, is not a nice thing. Um, the fourth uh, official, only him can express his, uh, his feelings. Of course, he made a, an unacceptable mistake, but uh, only him can open his heart, um, apologize, and um, accept the consequences. Uh, accept the consequences, but probably he's also a, a very good referee. But Everyone in football and in society, we have our responsibilities in relation to this uh, situation. And um, if we make mistakes, we have to accept the responsibilities. But more important than that for me is that that game become quite iconic. Um, Champions League game to, to stop after 15 minutes for a very sad reason will become iconic and, and hopefully in the future never happens um, again. But yes, as a football guy, I'm very, very sorry that in my industry, that situation happened. Okay, I'm going to finish with Matt Barlow. Matt. Hello, Jose. Um, if, I, if I can, just, um, I'd like to raise a couple of points. You've, um, You've told you've always said in the past that you, you disagree with the idea of Champions League teams finishing third and dropping into your competition. Can you can you explain why? Is it simply a point of principle? It's and, a point of principle. And if it if it happened to to my team, um, I would feel exactly I would feel exactly the same. It is the way it is, and uh, honestly. Uh, brings more quality to the competition. We cannot forget that. Uh, when you have eight new teams in the competition um, and eight teams that belong to another level and they drop to the Europa League, of course, the level of the competition is going to improve, no doubts. And when the quality improves, the attention improves and um, is a good thing for the competition, but by the sports point of view is where I think is, is not fair that a team that doesn't succeed in one competition drops to another. Is the same thing as imagine the third, the third team in Europa League. Now there is another competition and the third in Europa League instead of finish goes to a third competition in the hierarchy in um, European football. It's just a principle. I think when in football, when for, for some reason we don't succeed, unlucky next season. But it is the way it is and it's not a problem for me. Thank you. Did you mind if I raise? I'll let you ask it again. Go on, if you need a follow-up. Thank you, Simon. Uh, I, I just wanted to, to go back to last week, Jose, if I may. You said after the game last week, some of your players you thought didn't have the right attitude towards this competition. Um, and I wondered if you had any chance to speak to them about that, if, if you had any assurances that, that that was about to change or any concerns that it may be the case tomorrow. You know, I think they will, they will, from my experience, they will... Uh, face this competition seriously with the progression to the knockout to the knockout phase but the overall feeling is that in a group of uh, of six matches we are going to qualify we can lose one match or two or we can draw two or three we are going always to qualify because we are a team 
with good potential for for this group and i think that puts the the focus and the energy more in the premier league than in the europa league and i think this is what happened at the same time maybe there is a sense of um some of the players they think uh, i'm playing this match but i should be playing against arsenal or i should be playing against chelsea and instead of face the game uh, really professionally and saying this is my game this is the game i have to perform i think there is a little bit of of relaxation but in the end no drama because we did good enough to qualify and hopefully tomorrow we do we do well to win the game and and to finish first All right guys thank you very much thank you